brilliant speed with vibrant service, vibrant broadband internet. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Everyone healthy now? We're yeah. alive. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All the way up. You want that, for baby? Now. Yeah, for now. So you boys and girls are uh, starring on the show, and uh, you have a lot of content, so I better let you get to it. <laughs> yeah. I, it's a two-pager today. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. This is another Vibrant You Live. My name's Nathan. I'm Shane. I'm Jane. And I'm Bo. And yeah, thanks for having us again, KLFD uh, and Woody here. Today we're going to talk about Wi-Fi. We're going to talk about how to control your Wi-Fi. Uh, first, we'll talk about what we'll kind of define Wi-Fi and talk about what that even means. Jeff, do you know what Wi-Fi actually stands for? Um, Wi-Fi, I know that. No, I, I. You can tell me what does it stand for. I actually, I think it's Wi- wireless Wi-Fi fidelity technic- or wireless. Oh yes, is it fidelity? Ding ding ding! Wireless yeah. okay. fidelity. fidelity. Yep. See, impressive. I, I only I did looked not know dumb. that before. <laughs> <laughs> not true. Yeah, nobody really, nobody really uses that term anymore. Wi-Fi has just become the standard phrase. Yeah. Uh, wire, no one says wireless fidelity anymore, but that's actually what it stands for. Mm-hmm. And it's referring to the technology that allows us to connect to our internet wirelessly. Um, you know, whether it's your computers, your cell phones, your uh, Roku streaming devices, whatever, connects to your internet, but it does it wirelessly. You don't have to run a cable all over the place and hardwire everything in. Uh, before Wi-Fi, you had to just you had to do just that. You had to have cable across everywhere. Most people just had it connected to like a computer, maybe a printer. We didn't have all this wireless technology that we have now, like wireless cameras, cell phones, wireless printers, TVs. Uh, there's basically limitless devices now that we connect wire. But before Wi-Fi was a thing, we had to run wired everything, which certainly isn't feasible in today's age with how many devices we're trying to connect on the Internet. Imagine trying to run a wire to everything you wanted on the Internet now. It would be extremely hard to do so. Oh, yeah, like like, uh, LED light bulbs. Smart lights. Yeah, Yeah, I remember remember those days. And, and, uh, you know, I, I... in my home office at the time, I had a computer and a lap and a printer and you know a laptop and things. And everything had to be connected with a wire mm-hmm. from the router. And I remember getting the first wireless router, and I thought, "Wow, this is awesome! I can, I can, I don't have to run this cable all over my house, right?" right. So Wi-Fi, early Wi-Fi started in the '80s when the FCC released a spectrum of unlicensed radio bands. And that allowed uh, developers to to create different wireless communication technologies. In 1997, the IEEE 802.11. Ooh, yeah. I know that's kind of a, a mouthful. Right off the tip of your tongue all the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That standard was developed, and it laid the foundation for uh, wireless local networks, like mm-hmm. what you find in your home. Right. In 1999, the Wi-Fi Alliance was formed, and basically that was made to standardize Wi-Fi so that peripherals could communicate with each other. It was kind of a standardization. Um, that way your your printer has the same language as your computer and that kind of thing so that they can talk with each other. How it works is basically it's radio waves. Radio waves, um, they're used to transmit data between the devices, between your router and your device, and they are sent wirelessly, right? Mm-hmm to your smartphone and your laptop and, and your streaming device and that kind of thing. And and it, it's all at the speed of light, of course. You know, radio waves are at the speed of light, so that's why they're so fast. <coughs> uh, frequency bands, um, they, they operate on two different bands, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. 2.4 um, is a, uh, it's a slower speed, but it's a longer range. So if you have a 2.4 device, you could have that, a f- further away from the router. Oh, I see. But a five gigahertz is a faster speed, mm-hmm. but it's a shorter range. So you have to be closer to the to the router for that. I know, Jane, you you used, you have um, cameras that run on only one of the bands. Correct. correct? And w- when we first got uh, vibrant, we didn't have a dual band router, so I had to use my own router. And then uh, eventually we ended up getting it, so um, we were able to have an updated great router and have a dual band so my cameras function and everything else functions too. Yeah, earlier routers only uh, ran on one of the bands, one or the other, and then they combined them into, you know, the newer routers have both. Um, and then they also use encryption so so that um, not anybody, like your, your 
computer is going to be talking to your printer, and it's encrypted between the two so that it can't get hijacked. Mm. So that's that's uh, another thing. Can is, anything get in the way? Well, if I put a piece of aluminum foil in between there, I mean... Well, it, you know, it could slow it down, mean? yeah. So so Wi-Fi does slow down, like if you have walls or, okay. yeah. you know, especially... Plaster. Yeah, yeah, plaster or like a wire mesh okay. will slow things down. It doesn't stop it completely, um, but uh, it will slow things down. Okay. Um, so, Bo, go into some of what today's Wi-Fi routers are. Yeah, today's Wi-Fi routers are working off of what's called Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 now, and it just keeps kind of improving uh, as the years go on. And really what that means, they're just capable of faster speed, but also what they can do is they can uh, use a mesh system, which you can kind of think of that as wireless for your wireless routers. So instead of having to connect a cable from one router to another router to another, you can actually have a mesh system, which they all can talk wirelessly and it didn't used to be a necessity but when you just had your office router back in the day you didn't need anything else connected but i bet you didn't think you needed your refrigerator and your picture <laughs> frames and your light bulbs and alexa even like yeah even like 10 years ago i'm like well, that's crazy but uh it's come a long way so now you need everything connected and so well, the other extent Oh, I was oh, just yeah, going to say, ahead. there's um, there's so many homes that are really big now, too, and so you don't always have that wireless coverage. And right. um, when we're on the phone mm-hmm. talking to people, I always explain it, you know, A, B, C. So A is your original router, and we recommend that you centrally locate that. And then C is where you want to have that extension to watch your TV program or, you know, whatever that may be and b is where you place the mesh system so that way you're getting quality internet from that router the first router basically mm-hmm. does that make sense yeah we do. yeah we talk with a lot of people that they think their internet's not working great just because they're trying to use it maybe in their garage or um, in the attic and all it takes is just another router just a mesh router and they're really easy to connect they used to not be you used to have to plug them into a computer type in an IP address, get them connected that way, which just was kind of a big pain and it didn't always work. Now, uh, it's really easy. You can use a QR code. A lot of them just have apps that you use. You, you have your main router, you scan a QR code to router number two, number three, and you can get a whole network connected and you can even name them. So uh, it just allows you to connect everything in your house, everything in your business, your office, and uh, then you can control you know, so many things with the router. And Jane's going to go a little bit more into what you can control nowadays. Right. And it's pretty much everything, which is awesome. <laughs> so first off, when, when you guys sign up, we get your network name and password. And so that is something that you can change as well. The only thing that to be aware of is when you change something like that, you're changing every device mm-hmm. that is now connected wirelessly. So it's really important to remember your password and to remember your network name. Uh, and then it's... You know, most people, it's a hard time connecting your printer. They have a hard time with that wireless printer. For some reason, printers give us the biggest headache in yes. connecting to wireless networks. And I don't know why I agree. they can't just be easier than they are. But that is one thing t- to note that if you do take, take the time to change your own username and password, which you can on your router, all the, everything connected to that needs to, uh, needs to, get changed as well Mm -hmm. because it'll think well i got this i see this router but i don't have the right username and password so it's not going to connect and that's where um if you know what you're doing um certainly you can change your username and password right and then there's something really cool that you can do a guest network so uh let's say you're hosting some type of christmas party or whatnot and you don't want everybody to have access to your whole network you can just go ahead and create a a guest network and then they can log in with a different network name and password so and you can keep that temporary or you know you can shut it down as well that's something that um i would recommend you know putting your kids on the guest guest network because then they can give out the username and, and password to their friends and sure, they might have access to the guest network, but that's going to have a lot more controls over, over the standard network. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Speaking of controls, then there's the parent controls, which oh, I yeah. love. So as a, as a parent, you can control the type of content that each device is using. You can um, access it. You can make sure that the Internet is a safer place for kids. So that's, it's perfect. And then you can also block websites, too. So if, if there's something that you don't want your kids or your guests to see, you can certainly remove that as well. 
Yeah, using the um, the Vibrant app too for managing your Wi-Fi. It also lets you monitor all your connected devices. So you can see every device that's connected to your Wi-Fi. You can name them so you can easily identify them. You can even sort them by like person, like, oh, this is Jeff's devices. I'm gonna mm -hmm. sort all of Jeff's devices under Jeff's name. So then mm -hmm. when Jeff is being bad, I can turn off all of his internet and all of his devices. That's so he can't use happen. the internet anymore. <laughs> Jeff, yeah. you have to clean your room, so we're shutting your internet off. Yes, exactly yeah. right. So <laughs> similarly, you can then use that to monitor user time. So if you have a kid or somebody who's just using the internet too much, you can kind of see how much they're on the internet, how much they're using, and maybe use that to kind of, you know, do what you will with it. Then you can, one thing I'm really a big fan of is you can prioritize certain devices and prioritize bandwidth. For example, if you work from home, um, you can prioritize all your work devices to, that they get kind of access to the internet first. So that way, if the kids are home from school or something like that, they're not going to use up all the internet and your work's going to suffer. Your work stuff has priority. Or if you're like a gamer um, and you want to prioritize your gaming so that always works properly and someone else is trying to watch Netflix, well, your gaming will kind of always work first, this kind of thing. So uh, other stuff, you can schedule Wi-Fi access and turn, um, you know, internet off at certain times. If you have uh, kids or people that aren't going to bed when they should, you can have the internet automatically shut off at, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m., whatever you want, and then turn back on in the morning. Um, and then basic stuff, like you can use the app to update your firmware or software uh, make sure your devices are up to date, set on auto update, stuff like that. And then monitor your network performance. It'll kind of identify, oh, you know what? This device is regularly too far, you know, on the edge of your Wi-Fi signal. Maybe you should move it. Or, hey, this device is, is having errors for such and such reason. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in the app, just kind of monitoring your stuff and then having giving you a lot more control than I think people are used to or realize that they can do. Yeah, and some of the routers now will also protect your computer from malware or viruses so they'll block known threats and and let you know that that's hey something's trying to access your router um the app will track this and allow you to have some uh, like a list of trusted websites you know so uh let's say for example you could put facebook as a trusted website um or you know amazon or whatever but you can have that list to uh to track those things and if it's kind of not Facebook, it'll say, hey, something's trying to log into your site, mm -hmm. or into your router, I'm sorry. Um, but just this doesn't replace a proper antivirus software. So it's just a, a way to monitor, and it blocks known, you know, like if it's from Russia, Facebook.Russia or something like that. TikTok. Right? Oh, well, man. yeah. <laughs> that only does it for 48 hours, or 24 oh, yeah. hours. So that, <laughs> or 14 hours, I think it was. But yeah, whichever... But um, but yeah, don't let this replace an antivirus software. But it also but it, it is a nice add-on that uh, that protects you from or your or, I'm sorry your inner your Wi-Fi network okay. from threats. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people have routers that are quite old. So if you're if you're one of those people, and I, I you know it's easy to lose track of time. Sometimes I ask um, like, how old your router? Like probably a couple years old. And then I look into it like more like a decade old so mm -hmm. we always recommend just take a look at the last time you bought a router and also if you do have a newer one and are looking to maybe doing a mesh you can give us a call we'd be happy to answer questions especially you know if you have vibrant we always have options for extenders so if you have parts of your house that maybe aren't getting adequate coverage you can you know, certainly give us a call and we can fix that for you and yeah just know that routers have a lot more to them than they used to so you can check the apps that we have um, that are actually attached to the routers we provide, and you can do all the things we listed on there. If you want to play around with it, want to get a little more secure, just kind of monitor what's happening in the house, that's something we highly recommend. Yes. So the other thing is we are having our first 2025 Ooh, yeah. Dreaming of Streaming event. And so that's going to be held next Wednesday, January 29th at 530 at the co-op. So come on in for some educational information and then some beverages, non-alcoholic and uh, little some treats, that kind of stuff. And then uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. We're at 693-3231. That's where we'll find you. Yes, or the other thing is you can check us out at vibrantbroadband.com or catch us on the replay, Facebook or YouTube channel, or you can also search for Vibrant Broadband. And again, listen mm -hmm. live every Wednesday with all of us being healthy. Yeah, we're going to have <laughs> it all here. All right. 
Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Probably next week, half of us will be out again. That's that time of year, but yeah. it is what it is. So thanks, Woody, for hosting us. As sure. always, we appreciate your company. And thanks, KLFD, for having us on. And thank you for catching us uh, on the radio. Um, if you run into us out and about, certainly you can mention that you caught us on the radio. We love hearing that feedback. Um, but this has been another Vibrant You Live. I'm Nathan. I'm Shane. I'm Jane. And I'm Bo. And tune in next week for another episode of Vibrant You Live. Mm-hmm.